9-11 and the dot-com era helped launch something new, the conspiracy theory industrial complex, moving conspiracy theories from the fringes to the mainstream and making them profitable. And here's where things get tricky. Sometimes the conspiracy theory turns out to be true. And some skepticism is key to holding people in power accountable in a democracy. But too much skepticism can lead to a world where, to paraphrase Hannah Arendt, we begin to believe everything and nothing, think that everything is possible and that nothing is true. And if nothing is true, how does a democracy survive? I'm Rand Abdel Fattah. And I'm Ramtin Arab Louis. Coming up, we're going back to the earliest days of the internet to trace how we ended up in a world that can't be believed, beginning with UFOs. Part 1. The truth is out there. One summer day in 1947, a rancher near Roswell, New Mexico, came across something strange in the pasture where his sheep grazed. A field of debris he'd never seen before. Tinfoil, rubber strips, and sticks. But he had heard stories of unidentified flying objects, UFOs. There had been a flurry of sightings across the country that summer, people claiming to see flying saucers flash across the sky. Could this be related? The rancher brought a sample to the local sheriff, who was also stumped. Before long, an intelligence officer arrived at the rancher's door. He swept the fields, gathered as much of the debris as he could find, and left, leaving the rancher to wonder, what are they hiding? Look, up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! What was it they really saw? That question started spreading on the airwaves. Man is not alone. The mind fills it. Fantasy. Yesterday's fantasy sometimes turns into tomorrow's reality. What happened on that ranch near Roswell in 1947 would fuel conspiracy theories for decades to come. At first, people speculated it was a secret Soviet spacecraft. It was the beginning of the Cold War. But eventually, many people began to see it as ground zero of the alien invasion that the government was covering up. And that last part, the cover-up, was there no matter what version you believed. The idea that some people in power were keeping something from you and me, the powerless. I do not agree with the means by which the powerful few have chosen for us to reach the end. But unless we can wake the people from their sleep, nothing short of civil war will stop the planned outcome. This is the voice of Milton William Cooper. Most people knew him as Bill. He's reading from a book he wrote in 1991 called Behold a Pale Horse. We have been taught lies. Reality is not at all what we perceive it to be. To this day, it is considered a kind of conspiracy theory manifesto. It's actually the number one bestseller in the American prison system and has been cited by everyone from far-right militia members to rappers like Wu-Tang Clan, Talib Kweli, Nas, and Tupac Shakur. The book is 500 pages long, and there's something in it for everyone. AIDS was created in a lab to wipe out Africa. JFK was assassinated because he was about to reveal that aliens were on the verge of invading Earth. Cooper was a former naval intelligence officer during the Vietnam War, and he claimed without evidence that he saw first-hand documents talking about the government conspiracy around crashed alien spacecraft. Majesty 12 is the secret group that is supposed to control extraterrestrial information and projects. 
He cast himself as a whistleblower, a word that had taken on new meaning in American life during the Vietnam War era. I've earned every cent. But I have never obstructed justice. That I welcome this kind of examination. I'm not a crook. The 1970s were defined by a series of real-life conspiracies brought to light by whistleblowers and journalists. There was Watergate when the American public learned that President Richard Nixon had repeatedly lied to them about his involvement in a break-in at the Democratic National Committee headquarters. A report on the U.S. war in Vietnam revealing that four different administrations, Republican and Democratic, had misled the public about their intentions and actions in Vietnam. The CIA had attempted to assassinate foreign leaders. The FBI had carried out a 15-year operation called COINTELPRO that spied on and tried to sabotage civil rights leaders and groups like the Black Panther Party. And the U.S. Public Health Service had conducted a four-decade study on 600 Black men in Alabama, intentionally withholding treatment for syphilis without informed consent. Many Americans realize with horror for the first time that presidents would lie to the American people, that the government will lie to the American people. This is Garrett Graff. I'm a journalist and historian and author of books on subjects including Watergate and UFOs and 9-11. And I'm the host of a history podcast called Long Shadow. This may be the most startling film you'll ever see. All the lies and deceptions of this era led to more people, like Bill Cooper, becoming more skeptical of the official government story about anything. And the rise of a paranoid fringe that's trying to understand all of this change. I felt something staring at me or a feeling of being watched. And I turned around and that's when I saw Bigfoot. For some, conspiracy theories became a kind of outlet to imagine things they couldn't see to help them deal with the things they could. Films dramatize these fantasies. Things like Bigfoot, the Bermuda Triangle, and the big one... UFOs. You know, who knows what our universe can hold? Yes, a flick, a switch on the modem. Behold. By the 1980s, some of these fringe ideas were making their way onto the earliest versions of what we now call the Internet. Maybe you remember these kinds of sounds. I'm now waiting for the computer to answer me. There are even greater wonders than we dream. There were many competing networks. Some of them were defense-related. Some of them were commercial. Some of them were educational. Most Americans weren't yet online. It was mainly military personnel, academics, and businesses. But there was also a small group of computer hackers with their own amateur networks. What becomes uh, the BBS scene or bulletin board system scene? Basically, early chat rooms where people could type out their thoughts about all sorts of things. Aliens, the supernatural, the sky, or the universe really was the limit. What the internet really is, um, is like creative software to project our imaginations to other people, to think beyond one's immediate circumstances. To expose things that had been hidden and to fuel our wildest fears and fantasies in real time with the click of a button. And that, of course, is what conspiracy theories or really any fictional narrative lets us do. This is Walter Shirer. I'm the Dennis O'Dowdy Collegiate Professor of Engineering at the University of Notre Dame, and I just wrote a book called A History of Fake Things on the Internet. Walter says fake things have been on the Internet almost from the start, and that some of the most effective fake things are the ones you can't disprove. I think really any good conspiracy has that avenue, right, where it's like, well, it could be true. Bill Cooper started to build a name for himself on one of those bulletin boards called Paranet. It was dedicated to all things UFOs. There, he pushed the idea that aliens were colluding with secret government forces. 
Eventually, he gained enough of a following that he was able to take his message to the airwaves with a radio show called The Hour of the Time. In the coming months and hopefully years, this show is going to bring you information that is not available to the public, ladies and gentlemen, in any form. In 1987, something called the Fairness Doctrine, which required broadcasters to feature multiple perspectives on a given topic, was abolished. And suddenly, the radio, this old-school thing that seemed more and more out of date, found a new life. For conservative talk radio hosts in particular, it became a kind of on-air version of online chat rooms and pushed the envelope of what those conversations could be. It's a very angry voice. Bill Cooper becomes one of the most popular and influential nationwide talk radio show hosts um, in the 1990s. And Nazi means national socialism. It's on the left, not the right. He espouses this. We are in the process of falling into the abyss. Very dark, almost apocalyptic worldview of the looming showdown with the U.S. government. Profound and powerful forces are shaking and remaking our world. And then, in 1993, a UFO enthusiast was elected president. According to his longtime friend, Webster Hubble, one of the first things President Bill Clinton said to him when he was appointed associate attorney general was, quote, I want you to find the answers to two questions for me. One, who killed JFK? And two, are there UFOs? An investigation was then opened into the 1947 Roswell incident, declassifying some of the military documents. And it turned out the government had been hiding something. They were developing a secret series of Cold War balloons that would be able to detect, you know, for instance, a nuclear test in the Soviet Union. And one of those balloons had crashed in Roswell. The Pentagon just says it wasn't aliens. The front page of the report has a diagonal stamp across half the page that says, in all caps, CASE CLOSED. But for many people, it was anything but that, because this just proved that the government had been lying, leading to even more conspiracy theories. Today, nearly two-thirds of Americans believe there's extraterrestrial life out there. The exciting possibility of a world beyond everything we can see. What I discovered was amazing. But Bill Cooper and his listeners saw something much darker. What we would now call in the 2020s, the deep state. The deep state. What I discovered, ladies and gentlemen, is that there has been a plan in existence. The idea of this shadowy cabal of military and and intelligence professionals. To create an artificial extraterrestrial threat to this earth in order to create a one-world totalitarian socialist government. Then, one day, two men drove out to Bill Cooper's Arizona compound. One of those men is believed to have been A, a young Gulf War veteran named Timothy McVeigh. McVeigh was an avid listener of Cooper's show. The men asked Cooper if he'd read The Turner Diaries. Which is, in many ways, the blueprint for the modern white nationalist, white power movement. Cooper had, but he wasn't a fan. Before the men left, they turned to Cooper and said, Watch Oklahoma City. And then on April 19th, 1995. A massive explosion ripped apart the main federal office building in Oklahoma City today. At least 20 people are confirmed dead. People were screaming. I was screaming. Uh, People were hollering. Was anybody okay? Was anybody killed? Um, uh, The Oklahoma City bombing is still the deadliest domestic terrorist attack in American history. After the bombing... Cooper was called the most dangerous radio host in America. 
a title he wouldn't hold for much longer. Hello, caller. Are you on the air? Yes, Alex. How you doing? Pretty good. I was just kind of curious uh, uh, if it's true that uh, the police can uh, have laser uh, or infrared beams and project those into your house to basically... Yeah, the Austin Police Department's... Uh, In uh, the mid-1990s, there is a young public access host named Alex Jones, who is sort of just starting his media career. Alex Jones grew up in a suburb outside Dallas, listening to Bill Cooper's radio show. And Jones eventually switched from public access television to talk radio and began to make a name for himself as a firebrand, which soon led to him getting fired. Alex Jones, who is either Austin's great exposer of truth or a black helicopter conspiracy nut, depending on your worldview, has been canned from his evening talk show, The Austin Chronicle. The station manager said his views were just too hard to sell to advertisers. Jones said the real reason was, quote, purely political. Jones then decided to start his own website. He bought the domain name InfoWars for $9 and began broadcasting from home. If traditional advertisers didn't want him, he would find new ones on the Internet. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Coming up, the conspiracy theory industrial complex is born. Born. 